The 1960s Corvair, condemned by Ralph Nader as unsafe at any speed. Since Nader's attack, it's being increasingly accepted that we need government protection in the marketplace. Today, there are agencies all over Washington where bureaucrats decide what's good for us. Agencies to control the prices we pay, the quality of goods we can buy, the choice of products available. It's already costing us more than $5 billion a year. Since the attack on the Corvair, government has been spending more and more money in the name of protecting the consumer. This is hardly what the third president of the United States, Thomas Jefferson, whose monument this is, had in mind when he defined a wise and frugal government as one which restrains men from injuring each other and leaves them otherwise free to regulate their own pursuits of industry and improvement. Ever since the Corvair affair, the U.S. government has increasingly been muscling in between buyer and seller in the marketplaces of America. By Thomas Jefferson's standards, what we have today is not a wise and frugal government, but a spendthrift and snooping government. The federal regulations that govern our lives are available in many places. One set is here, in the Library of Congress, in Washington, D.C. In 1936, the federal government established the Federal Register to record all of the regulations, hearings, and other matters connected with the agencies in Washington. This is volume one, number one. In 1936, it took three volumes like this to record all these matters. In 1937, it took four, and then it grew, and grew and grew. At first, rather slowly and gradually, but even so, year by year, it took a bigger and bigger pile to hold all the regulations and hearings for that year. Then, around 1970, came a veritable explosion, so that one pile is no longer enough to hold the regulations for that year. It takes two and then three piles, until on one day, in 1977, September 28th, the Federal Register had no fewer than 1,754 pages. And these aren't exactly what you would call small pages either. Many of those regulations come from this building. Consumer Product Safety, our lines are busy. Would you hold, please? Thank you. The Consumer Product Safety Commission is one of the newest agencies set up in our behalf. Coil. May I help you? One of its jobs is to give advice to consumers. Then, uh, the cue that gave it away is that uh, those that are involved... And what has been done about the flammability of children's garment? But its main function is to produce rules and regulations, hundreds and hundreds of them, designed to assure the safety of products on the market. It's hard to escape the visible hand of the Consumer Product Safety Commission. Except for food and drugs, ammunition and automobiles, which are covered by other agencies, it has power to regulate just about anything you can imagine. Already, it costs $41 million a year to test and regulate all these products on our behalf. And that's just the beginning. The commission employs highly trained technicians to carry out tests like this checking the brakes on a bike. But the fact is that 80% of bike accidents are caused by human error. These tests may one day lead to safer brakes, but even that isn't sure. The one thing that is sure is that the regulations that come out of here will make bikes more expensive and will reduce the variety available. Yes, they really are testing how matches strike. And the tests are very precise. The pressure must be exactly one pound. The match exactly at right angles. 
Consumer Product Safety Commission. No matter how many tests are done, children's swings are never going to be totally safe. You cannot outlaw accidents. If you try, you end up with ludicrous results. It hardly seems possible, but they really do use highly skilled people to devise regulations that will prevent toy guns from making too big a bang. Consumer product safety. The commission, in effect, is deciding what they think is good for us. They are taking away our freedom to choose. Okay. Consumers don't have to be hemmed in by rules and regulations. They're protected by the market itself. They want the best possible products at the lowest price. And the self-interest of the producer leads him to provide those products in order to keep customers satisfied. After all, if they bring goods of low quality here, you're not going to keep coming back to buy them. If they bring goods that don't serve your needs, you're not going to buy them. And therefore, they search out all over the world the products that might meet your needs and might appeal to you. And they stand in back of them, because if they don't, they're going to go out of business. You see the difference between the market and the political action, the governmental agency. Here, nobody forces you. You're free. You do what you want to. There's no policeman to take money out of your pocket or to make sure that you do what you're told to. Over a quarter of a century ago, I bought secondhand a desk calculator for which I paid $300. One of these little calculators today, which I can buy for $10 or so, will do everything that did and more beside. What produced this tremendous improvement in technology? It was self-interest, or if you prefer, greed. The greed of producers who wanted to produce something that they could make a dollar on. The greed of consumers who wanted to buy things as cheaply as they could. Did government play a role in this? Very little, only by keeping the road clear for human greed and self-interest to promote the welfare of the consumer. Remember, we started out this program with a Corvair, an automobile that was castigated by Ralph Nader as unsafe at any speed. The reaction to his crusade led to the establishment of a whole series of agencies designed to protect us from ourselves. Well, some 10 years later, one of the agencies that was set up in response to that uh, move finally got around to testing the Corvair that started the whole thing off. And what do you suppose they found? They spent a year and a half comparing the performance of the Corvair with the performance of other comparable vehicles. And they concluded, and I quote, the 1960-63 Corvair compared favorably with the other contemporary vehicles used in the tests. 